Welcome to episode 119 of the Lone Hockey Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about some standouts between Chicago and Anaheim from last night's matchup and really good showing from Chicago once again. And they had a really good game all game long and they were thriving, especially offensively and on the power play. They looked really good in terms of their puck movement and how they were attacking off the rush and they had some good patterning and how they were able to gain the zone with speed, with pace, and with purpose. So their movements inside the Ozone looked a little bit more controlled, and they've had a lot of games this season where they've looked good on the power play. They just haven't been super consistent. It's like one game they look really good, and the next game it's just completely off. So it's a good showing for them, and they deserved the win last night. So Connor Bedard looked really good yesterday. Electric game from him, three assists, and – up to around a point per game. I believe he's just under a point per game right now. So he had five shots. He was shooting the puck. He was creating a lot of volume in terms of his shot ability. And at the same time with his playmaking and how he's able to generate space lanes and being able to force coverage to move to him. And that's one of his biggest assets is when he can get defenders to actually move to him and try to close on him because he can always find a way to gain an escape. And so with Bedard, it's like, situation where you don't want to get too easily manipulated as a defenseman by him because if you get too close to him, he can still find a way to dig around you. And he did a lot of that yesterday where guys would try to close in on him and then he would just maneuver around him, create space the other way. He made it look easy. Taylor Hall actually looked really good this game and he looked really good as a playmaker. He had a really nice pass. I believe it was Ryan Donato's goal. We had a really nice seam pass and Royal Road pass where he hooked a pass around the defenseman and then he passed it across the middle of the ice and to, like I said, I believe it was Donato on the weak side of the ice and he was able to one time it. It was a power play goal. I remember that. And it was just a really nice feed and Taylor Hall's looked really good as a playmaker and past few games, he's looked better as a passer as well. And he's thrived in that role and he's, had some really good looks and he's been able to find some really good open lanes and that's really helped him. Ryan Donato talking about him. He had one goal yesterday and talked about that Taylor Hall feed to him and he looked good once again yesterday. He's been a really nice staple as the Hawks bottom six forward where he can play a checking role, but he can also play skill game. And we've talked a lot about that on this podcast previously, how those two coincide with each other, especially for modern bottom six checkers. Nowadays you have to be skilled as well. And then Isaac Phillips, first goal of the season. He looked really good last night. It came off a feed from Dard, and he was able to roof the shot. I believe he was just – he's coming into the zone, and he's just providing puck support for Dard. He's just activating. And as a defenseman especially, that activation became a little bit more crucial because it allowed him to receive the puck and then quickly shoot it, and then he was able to rip it top shelf. It was a really nice release. And it was a really nice shot for his first goal of the season. He's been up and down the lineup, up and down between the AHL and the NHL for quite some time now. So he's looking to find a consistent role within this team. It's going to be a little bit trickier for him since there's a lot more veterans added to the defensive core this year. But at the same time, Phillips looked really good yesterday. He might be able to stick in some future games for the Hawks as well. And then Table Teravine had a really nice Goal as well. Really nice one timer. Actually, I believe the Hall pass. I don't, again, I don't remember which one it was. It was either Donato's goal or Tara Vinen's goal that Hall made that pass. And, but anyway, Tara Vinen looked really good yesterday once again. And I noticed them a lot all across the board in terms of D zone play, in terms of neutral zone play. And ozone play is a little subtle. You don't necessarily notice him a ton. You notice him in terms of some under the radar type plays, but. I notice Table a lot when it comes to his neutral zone play and his routes and his D zone coverage and how he can provide more of that shutdown role. Alex Vlasic was really poised yesterday too, and that was a really good shine, really good sign, really good showing. He was playing against his former NTDP teammate Trevor Zegers and BU as well. They played together there, and so with. Classic. He looked really controlled with the puck on his stick and transitioning pucks and providing small area support. That was one of the bigger assets in his game yesterday was supporting the play and being able to provide puck support. And he's really detailed in how he's doing it. And he's really time 
timing his routes really well off the puck to be able to move into space and be able to find those little seams. And then we'll get to some standouts on Anaheim's side. I actually want to start with Cutter Gauthier. I thought he had a really good showing, and he looked really good shooting the puck. He was shooting with a lot of volume. He was shooting off the rush. He was shooting in the ozone. He was shooting off rebound opportunities. He was shooting off one-touch plays where he could just – wire the puck he has an ability where it's like a slingshot with the puck off his stick where he can just catch and release right away and he can rip it and he's really skilled at being able to create those shots in a variety of ways and then we could talk about ross johnson brock mcginn but they're bottom six checker type players but they stood out yesterday mason mctavich looked really good yesterday especially around the net he's a tenacious player tenacious four checker big body really skilled as a playmaker, really skilled and has evolved as a goal scorer as well and how he's been able to translate that to the NHL. And he's looking to have a big season this year. And it's going to be interesting to see how his season goes and how he continues to adapt to Anaheim's system. And obviously Anaheim has a lot of bigger players in their system now who are young. So that's going to continue to help McTavish's game evolve, but also at the same time evolve his own games to be able to adapt to his linemates and be able to be a dual threat player over time. And then Leo Carlson, I really liked his entry play yesterday. I was really impressed with that. I was really impressed with how much pace he had to his feet. And that was one of the things I remember watching was draft year when he was playing in the SHL, not the fastest player, but really skilled in small areas, really skilled with his hands, really skilled with his agility in small areas and had a nifty ability to escape pressure. But now I've noticed a little bit more separation speed when it comes to him. And that's a really noticeable factor when it comes to his rush play, because having that separation gear, that longer stride, that longer gear allows him to be able to control pace a little bit more effectively. And he's like Anze Kopitar in that sense, where he's not the fastest player, but really, really elite hockey sense to be able to get to areas on time and to be able to, find open ice and so with leo carlson adding that pace to his game has really helped him it's going to really help him evolve heading into the future and going to allow him to continue to become an even better player than he is already and then you notice the dual threat ability i've noticed his playmaking for quite some time i've noticed his goal scoring for quite some time I remember writing an article about him Right before the 2023 NHL draft, and I was talking about why he'll translate to the NHL. And some I provide some style comps for him. And I believe I put in that article is Andre Kopitar, Leon Dreisidel, and then what was the other one? Evgeny Malkin. Those are the three I had in there because I felt like he's a mix of those three in a sense. It's really hard to pinpoint one when it comes to him, but He's a good mix of those three. I would say he leans a little bit more towards Malkin because if he's adding that pace to his game now, that resembles a little bit more Malkin-like ability because Dreisaitl isn't necessarily the fastest. Kopitar is in that same realm. But Malkin has a little bit more separation speed than the other two. So with Carlson adding that separation gear, I wouldn't be surprised if he continues to evolve into more of a Malkin-like player, especially if that – adding to that off-rush play and how he's able to use that patterning element and that speed element to be able to be an attacker off the rush. And then Lucas Dostal was really good in that for Anaheim. I know that he gave up four goals, but on the whole, he wasn't getting a whole lot of support from his D, and that was a big factor. And they were giving a lot of interior shots up, and Anaheim wasn't necessarily the best at being able to prevent that and their D zone coverage was allowing a lot of interior space shots and sometimes too easily. So the coverage in D zone situations is a little bit mistimed when it comes to not only their D, but their forwards tracking back. So with Dostal, he was really good with his blocker and really good with his glove. Sometimes the glove, like any goalie would slip up a little bit and he would give up some rebounds, but at the same time, he looked really good with the blocker, controlling rebounds really well. He was stirring guys or stirring pucks to the corners. He was turning pucks away. He was able to deflect pucks into areas that were low danger and controlled with the butterfly, controlled in how he was doing the reverse VH. He was controlled in how he was 
tracking the puck with his eyes through seams, through traffic, through layers of traffic from the point. He was good in a variety of ways. And again, Chicago scored four goals, but at the same time, he was a standout in that. And he was making some really good saves, some really high quality saves in certain situations. And he's got depth to his ability. He's got depth to his stance. He's got depth to how he's able to use his agility. So that makes him seem bigger than he actually is in the net. So that certainly gives him an advantage. But with Dostal, he's a guy that stands out. And he could certainly be a much better goaltender for them in the near future for Anaheim. He's already a guy that is on the brink and he's going to continue to make more strides in his game over time. But having some of that foundational ability, and again, it's only one game that I've seen of him thus far, but that one game sample size is still a really strong showing from an NHL goalie. And at the same time, in the future, what else could he be and what more can he be? And if he could steal a game where he played as well as this, but he didn't steal the game, but if he can steal a game in the future, he could become an even better goalie than he is now. And again, he didn't get a lot of support from his D, but he's playing really well in net. So imagine how he could play when his D are on top of things and then he could be the backbone as well. So that's just my thought. And he's a really good goalie. I like his foundational elements. I like his mechanics. I like how he moves. And I think there's a lot more to his game heading into the future with Anaheim as well.